Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here, and in today's Grand Theft Auto 5 video, we're doing another Q&A video where I take your questions from both Twitter and Snapchat, and I answer them all in this video. Now, in today's Q&A, we've got a lot of great questions revolving around the latest kind of update week, looking ahead in Grand Theft Auto Online, and what we could see going forward in the summer. Now, as always, if you wanna get involved in the next Q&A video, all you have to do is go down in the description, follow me on Snapchat, follow me on Twitter, and uh, every time I'm looking for Q&A questions, just be sure to use the hashtag AskBoss, and you might find yourself featured in a future video. But of course, without the way, let's not waste any more time, and let's jump straight into the questions. Okay, our first question today comes from Cameron, who tweets to me, hashtag AskBoss, when do you think we will have some news on the Cunning Stunts DLC and the remaining two cars, the 811 and the 770? So I actually think that news on Cunning Stunts and those two cars actually go hand in hand. Because as I predicted in previous videos, I believe that the 811 is going to be released on July 5th and the 770 is going to be released in just a few short days on Tuesday. Now again, Rockstar could totally surprise us and release both those cars at the same time although I would find that highly unlikely. So because of that, I think we're gonna be getting two more event weeks back to back, an event week that features the 770 and an event week that features the 811. And because of that, we likely won't see any information on cunning stunts until after those event weeks are over. So my guess is that because I believe the 811 comes out July 5th, that event week will go through July 12th. The earliest we might see something is that week of July 5th maybe even into July 12th. So it could be a while, it could be two or three weeks before we see any information on the Cunning Stunts DLC, which is kind of a shame because it's been hyped up for a while now, ever since Rockstar teased it. I know a lot of people are looking forward to this, how it's gonna be like, what vehicles are gonna come. So as much as we're excited for information, I don't think we're gonna be getting information quite yet. I think we've gotta get these other two cars out of the way first. Our next question comes from John Smith who tweets to me, do you think there will be a 4th of July DLC with new or old content or both? Hashtag ask boss. So this also kind of goes hand in hand with what I think is gonna happen with the two remaining cars. Because I think the 811 is gonna be released the day after July 4th, which is July 5th, obviously, I don't think Rockstar has time to squeeze in an Independence Day DLC. And if they do, I think that they're just gonna be adding the old content. Like they might make the Sovereign and the Liberator go on sale. They'll probably bring back the firework launcher and the fireworks that you can place on the ground. I would be thoroughly shocked if Rockstar introduced a new Independence Day DLC. I would be very excited, don't get me wrong, that would be really stellar and pretty epic, but I don't expect it from them just because I think they're working hard on cunning stunts, and we've obviously got those two unreleased cars that are looming right around the corner that kind of impede right in the middle of that Independence Day, 4th of July timeline. So unfortunately, no, and if we do get anything, I believe it will be old content. Up next, we have a question from Joseph who tweets me, do you think the new sports car will be the new best in its class? Hashtag ask boss. So he is talking about the 770. Now, I have done some straight line drag tests in single player with these cars, obviously, because it's not available in online, and my results were very close to the Masakro. So I do not think that this new sports car will be a sports car class killer. I think that it will be very usable in races, meaning that if you wanna use the Jester or the Masaka or the 770, you can and probably use it no problem. Will it be the fastest supercar? That I've yet to determine because we don't have it in online, we can't do any races, we can't do any tests like that. So for now, I think it's going to be a very good vehicle. It's gonna be very competitive, but will it be the best? That is unknown. It was really close with the Masakro in my single player test, but until we get it in online, we just can't be 100% sure. Talking about a current vehicle, this next one comes from Amen490, who tweets to me, do you think the new Grazi X80 Proto lived up to the hype so far? Hashtag ask boss. So yeah, this vehicle had a lot of hype, and I think some people were expecting it to like blow the supercar class out of the water, and it turns out that that wasn't really the case. While the Grotti has like the best, I think, acceleration and top speed, it has a tougher time handling and braking and with traction as well. So overall, it's kind of balanced out. Do I think it lived up to the hype? I certainly think it's one of the most unique cars ever in the game. Although, is it worth the $2.7 million price tag it's been given? That is for everyone to determine because $2.7 million to someone might be their whole bank account. 
whereas $2.7 million to someone else might be, you know, a tenth of their bank account where it's not that much for them. And if they don't love the car, they can either sell it or they can just keep it in their garage for whenever they want to bring it out. So do I think it lived up to the hype? It's hard to tell because it's not like Rockstar ever formally announced this car. It was just found in the files and we expected it to come out. But as far as like anticipating it to come out and how it was going to drive, yeah, I think it did live up to the hype. It's a really cool car. Obviously, a lot of people seem to like it. And it's a pretty nice and fast supercar as well. So what's not to love? Our next question comes from ScoopyYT who tweets at me, do you think the Cunning Stunts DLC will let us inside the Maze Bank Arena for possible Rockstar made stunt races? An example would be dirt bike races, hashtag ask boss. So that would be super cool if Rockstar did include uh, the Maze Bank Arena to be opened. I think it's a building that, like the casino, definitely needs to be utilized. And that would be epic. I think they could incorporate something like the San Andreas Flight School, except for like maybe a San Andreas Stunting Academy or Stunt School. I don't know what they would name it or what they would call it. But yeah, I could definitely see a possibility there and it would be like a perfect location for something like that. And it could also open up the door for content creators to create some really cool indoor races. How epic would that be? And instead of like a long race, it was just two or three laps around a stunt course where you had loops and jumps and flips and, you know, crazy things you had to do in order to complete the race and to get the checkpoints. So do I think it's a good idea? Absolutely, that would be so cool and would be epic. But we do know that Rockstar is kind of on the fence about making crazy changes into the game. But who knows, Cunning Stunts might be a very you know game-changing DLC with lots of features, and it's something they might do, which would totally be epic. Very interesting question coming up next from Warren Smith, hashtag ask boss. How many more DLCs can we expect for Grand Theft Auto Online in 2016? So we know that Rockstar has at least one more DLC scheduled, and that's going to be the Cunning Stunts update. So let's just predict that that comes out in either the middle or late July or early August. Well, that would maybe leave room for two or three DLCs after that. So I'm thinking Cunning Stunts. I'm thinking one DLC in either late September or early October that would then include a, I guess, a Halloween DLC, and then another DLC in either late November or December that would include a Christmas update. So if we do Cunning Stunts, the DLC in September or October, Halloween, the December DLC, and then Christmas, we may see five more total DLCs, which would be great. And I would love it if Rockstar were to balance it out evenly. So hopefully that's what they do. We see one in you know August and then October and then November, December, whereas they kind of spread it out. That would be extremely cool of them. And five more DLCs would be epic. Now that might be a stretch, but at a minimum, I could definitely see at least two to three more updates coming in 2016. Melanie tweets at me, do you think the Cunning Stunts DLC cars will be customizable at Benny's? Hashtag ask boss. So this is kind of an interesting question because Rockstar did mention stunt ready vehicles, which is why I think they're going to create a new stunt shop. I don't know if it's gonna be a shop that's specifically designed for customizing vehicles to make them ready for stunt races, whether that's adding specialty roll cages or you know shocks that can handle the big jumps and whatnot, or whether it's roll bars or something like that. That would be really cool, which is why I do think they will create a new custom shop. Uh, because it would just seem odd that Benny's is so focused on low riders to then all of a sudden start focusing on stunt ready vehicles. That would be really cool if they did open up a unique stunting racing shop or custom shop. And I really hope that Rockstar goes in that direction. And I'm thinking they might because look what they did with Benny's. They weren't afraid to open up a new, uh, I guess, customization shop. And it ended up working really well for them. So we are just going to have to wait and see and find out. Up next, we have a question from 34 Bands who tweeted me, do you think it would be nice to hide Pegasus vehicles or change your Pegasus vehicle list? Hashtag ask boss. 34 bands, yes, this is something we've wanted for a while now, the ability to either sell Pegasus vehicles or hide them, which is kind of a new feature that Rockstar just added into the game. So they, not, they didn't do that specifically with Pegasus vehicles, but they did that with the gun locker where you could take away guns from your inventory, which is great because if you only want a certain set of guns, then you won't have to scramble and scroll through them all. 
And I think they should do that with Pegasus too. They should create a Pegasus garage where you could not necessarily store them because that doesn't make sense, but you go inside the garage and you can choose to take what you want out of your inventory. That would be so easy, it would be so concise, and it would definitely help us through scrolling through all those vehicles that we either don't want or don't use anymore when selecting the best Pegasus ride. Up next, we have a question from Philim who tweets me, do you think the finance and felony update was a waste of your money in game? So I don't think so, but there is a significant upfront cost, more than any DLC we've seen so far. So I've touched on this in previous videos. If you wanna start making money as a CEO, one, not only do you need time to do the CEO missions, which are consuming, but also risky, you've also gotta own an office, you've gotta own a warehouse, you likely will want to buy armored vehicles like the XLS, Insurgent, so you can do them better. So yeah, there is a huge upfront cost. In the long run, I think this CEO system is gonna work really great for people because they will start to eventually make their money back and in large quantities and in large sums. But up front, you do need a lot of money to invest and for some people that can be incredibly off-putting because we've been so used to instant rewards. Whether it's through adversary modes or contact missions or even heist for the most part, you're rewarded pretty instantaneously. But with the CEO system, it's the exact opposite and for a lot of people, like I said, that might be a put off, even though in the long run, they probably will end up making their money back. All right, and our last question today comes from Andrew Kennedy, who tweets at me, hashtag ask boss, what method do you think is the best to make lots of cash? Love the videos and tips and tricks. Well, thank you, Andrew. So right now, when you guys are watching this video, Power Play is really, really great. The Power Play playlist, you can make a ton of money with that game mode right now because it's double money in RP. That's really great. You guys know I'm doing CEO money making live streams, which is still one of the best ways to generate cash. Heist is still up there. Contact missions are still up there as well in terms of making money. You know, I only like to recommend shark cards if it's an emergency, but what I have been using is a website called Opinion Outpost. It's basically where users can earn cash, they can earn Amazon gift cards, iTunes gift cards. That's basically what I've been doing. I've been, you know, just answering one or two questions. Uh, I've been taking that cash, turning it into like PayPal cards where I'm just getting shark cards in game and you can fund stuff like that. So I'll leave a link in the description to Opinion Outpost. You can check it out. They were really kind enough to sponsor this video. So big thanks to them. Uh, but yeah, that's how you can make some money in game in GTA and also out of game in things you can do on the daily basis, like when you're doing homework and whatnot. So anyways, that's all the questions that I'm gonna be answering in this week's Q&A video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. Once again, if you wanna get involved in the next one, all you have to do is go down in the description, follow me on Twitter and Snapchat, and use the hashtag AskBoss if you wanna find yourself possibly featured in a future update. If you did go on to enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily GTA 5 videos like this. Without the way, guys, like I said, thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.